Hi, this is Anthony and welcome back to my show. As you can see, my DB Cooper videos are really blowing up, at least for me. I know that some DB Cooper related videos on YouTube, especially from documentaries, have probably hundreds of thousands of views, but my videos getting 4,000 or 6,000 views in some cases in just the last week or week and a half is really exciting for me. And I'm actually kind of surprised that some of the bigger name DP Cooper researchers have videos with far less views than my own. I couldn't do it without you, my viewers. Anyway, thank you very much for everyone that views them, and thank you very much for commenting. I encourage everyone to comment, even if you disagree with me and what I say in my videos. Yesterday, one of my viewers took issue on some points about the ransom money. They said that there was no way that they could have been photographed and the serial numbers recorded. However, I think that the evidence indicates that it was. I've not seen, and they've probably not released, the microfilm photographs of the notes themselves, but I have seen photographs of the list of serial numbers that was released by the FBI subsequent to the skyjacking. I think that it's pretty clear that most people who look at this case agree that there is in fact a legitimate list of all the serial numbers. Now some people think that there's no way that they could get all those serial numbers recorded so quickly before the ransom was delivered to Cooper. Well, the answer is the bank had the money set aside specifically if there was a robbery where they had to give up a large amount of money or there was some other reason such as their fear that the president of the bank might be kidnapped and a ransom have to be paid. So that's it. Prudent precautions taken in advance. You have some cash sitting on the shelf in the vault in case it's needed for a ransom. It's certainly there if you need to use it as cash. And in this case, it was used as the Cooper ransom. I think most people know that about nine years after the hijacking, a young boy found two full and one partial packets of bills in the sand at a place called Tina Bar. This was a beach downstream from Vancouver, Washington, so to the west of the city, and was private property where people could camp and also where sand was deposited when the Columbia River was dredged to keep the shipping lanes deep enough for ships. And as we know, most people believe that it's likely that Cooper left the plane somewhere to the east of Vancouver. It could have been to the northeast in a heavily forested mountainous area, or it could have been directly to the east of the city along or in the Columbia River. But the point is, is most people do not believe that Cooper survived the jump and landed on Tina Bar and buried the ransom or part of it there, although there are some people that believe that. For what it's worth, I disagree with that. I believe that the money ended up in the Columbia River, probably directly after leaving the plane and that it was dredged up and deposited there at a later period. Oh, and to answer the question in my video title, is there treasure still to be found? I sincerely doubt it. After nine years, the money that was found was in an extremely decayed state. You'll see pictures of a few bills, but those are some of the best preserved ones. You have to remember that there were parts of 290 $20 bills found. A few days ago was the 51st anniversary of the skyjacking. If there were any other bills that ended up in the Columbia or within the sands along its shoreline, they have long since decomposed. What about the rest of the ransom money entering circulation? None of it ever did. I argue that if any of it did, eventually it would have been checked against the list that banks as well as casinos and racetracks had been given and somebody would have found at least one note from the remaining 9,710 unaccounted for banknotes. When banknotes in circulation wear out, the government destroys them. My understanding now is that they are run through a machine that records their serial numbers before destruction. I don't know if there was any recording of serial numbers in prior years that would capture a record of Cooper serial numbers before those bills would have been destroyed, assuming that the skyjacker made it down safely and was able to spend some of the ransom. But I believe that if the bulk of the rest of the ransom money was put into circulation, some of the notes would have been detected eventually. In the show notes, I'm going to put information about the documentation of the bills prior to the hijacking from two different sources. I'm not going to vouch for the validity of the sources, but they certainly seem to be informed on the subject. As always, I encourage you to do your own research and look at everything with a critical eye, asking yourself, does this make logical sense and is this accurate information that I'm seeing on the internet? I want you to look at everything you see with a skeptical eye, including information that I provide.
I'm trying to build a monetized channel here on YouTube, and I believe that the best way to do that is to provide entertaining information to people that is accurate as possible. Sometimes you have to make thumbnails and titles that get people to click on the video, but the rest of the information that I provide, I want to be as accurate as possible. So if you see anything that you know to be incorrect that I've said, or you want to challenge me on my conclusions, I sincerely encourage you to do so. Okay, I want to keep this one short. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you subscribe to this channel and cl hopefully click the like button. And certainly please leave a comment. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my other DB Cooper videos and I'll have new ones coming out in the next few days.